Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our webinar this morning on heavy duty and uh, solving the problems that come with DPF systems. I'm Alex. This is my friend and colleague, Mark Hawkins. Good Mark morning. is an ASE certified master tech and uh, our technical advisor here on our team. You're seeing us today in our Redline Tech Academy, which is in our facility in beautiful Orange, California. It's a place that we do webinars, we hold classes, we do technical trainings. If you're ever in the area, please stop by and see us. And you can take a look at the white paper during our talk or after our talk, download it. It's got a lot of really helpful technical information in it. Um, and we talk a lot about after treatment problems and what that means. When we talk about after treatment problems, we're talking about excessive regeneration. Um, we're talking about premature clogging of premature the DPL cough. filter. So you're increasing your cost by having right. to do excessive cleanings. Right. You right. know, um, it's it's in fleets. More and more fleets are telling me they're one of their uh, top three expenses uh, for uh, driving those trucks is. Uh, after treatment uh, diagnostic and repair. DPF maintenance yeah. and repair, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So this is the world we live in now. We all want cleaner air. We all want to have better emissions, right? right? Be good citizens. Um, but that also means that we are living with DPF and after treatment systems. It's here to stay. So we need to learn how to maintain and take care of these things Correct. so that it's not a big cost and so that it certainly doesn't cut into uptime. Right, right. right. You need the trucks on the road to make money. So Absolutely. every minute the truck's on the road, it's making money. When it's in the shop, it's costing money. There you go. Right. That's what it comes down to. So when we talk about DPF problems, mm -hmm. um, excuse me, after treatment problems, right. what we've found is over a period of two years of field research across hundreds of trucks is that 89% of after treatment problems had a root cause in upstream component faults or right. unmetered air leaks upstream of the after treatment system. Correct, correct. Uh, a big problem, it's a hidden problem that, you know, normally they come sealed from the factory as a new truck, all, all the systems. Uh, believe it or not, a lot, of, a lot of trucks are coming right from the factory with leaks in them, you know. Uh, the problem with leaks, any kind of leak in your intake and exhaust or even crankcase, causes air fuel mixture problems, mm. which causes more fuel consumption, uh, the big expense, and that boils down to overtaxing the after treatment system. Mm -hmm. So even as a general maintenance item, you have to uh, find these leaks uh, in the systems just as a, um, a means of a pre, pre uh, uh, inspection. So a lot of these bigger fleets are now implementing this technology using high pressure diagnostic leak detection right. as part of their PM, part of their ongoing procedure so that they're finding these unmetered air leaks, these problems that are eroding fuel economy and causing a loss of uptime yes. right you know. before, before it happens. Well, you know, it's, it's not just the fleets, it's, it's the OEM, the manufacturer. Uh, they're reaching out to us. They've reached out to us for the last several years now and they've either approved our tool, uh, the red line tool, or we have the only mandated essential tool for, for the dealer network, for many manufacturers. So we, we have the go-to tool to find these leaks in, the app, in, in this world. Okay, so we can talk about finding leaks. There are all kinds of ways to do it, but one of the parts that I think is most essential to understand about this is that there's an enormous percentage of upstream component leaks that will only appear under boost. So Correct. you have to find a way to simulate the boost of a running engine. Exactly. And you know what happens, under pressure, under heat, these components expand, right? right? And now all of a sudden, what was invisible before, you've got a small crack right. or a flange that's leaking or something that's, that's not sealed, that's where your leak comes from. Right. The ways that they were doing this before are so dangerous and really ineffective. Well, for years, the method was just check the charge air cooler because the charge air cooler is the first thing to fail mm -hmm. in, an, in the um, boost system. And the problem with that is that's old school. Charge air cooler uh, or more robust, yeah. they are sealed from the factory. They don't have any built-in leaks anymore. Right. And, and the weak spot happens to be most everywhere else now. Right. All the joints. You know, the turbo itself. 
the crankcase, the intake manifold, the exhaust manifold, uh, you know, any of the plumbing for the exhaust is a leak which could cause uh, air infiltration, right? So, so they've been using sort of soapy water or, you know, a, a lot of engine management systems will not allow the truck to be, uh, to run inside the service bay, right. right? So they're MacGyvering all of these really crazy, ineffective, dangerous ways right. to build boosts inside yeah. a service we, bay. We built, with the help of manufacturers, we built the only tool that can effectively and very simply, within minutes, hook up, do quick diagnostic uh, within, you know, under 10 minutes. So this is the only way to simulate the boost of a running engine right. to test the entire system under boost with the engine safely off. Correct. That's really important. 73% of these leaks will only appear under boost. You're not gonna find it. Correct, another. correct. And you have to simulate that boost. There's no other way to do it other than to add boost. Uh, with the engine off, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, it, very simply, our, our machine works um, with, with um, visible vapor. Uh, it, it creates that boost, and you, what you're using is uh, inflatable adapters that, that I have here. One's inflated, one's not. Use simple air pressure to inflate these bladders, uh, your compressed shop air. Mm -hmm. You add a um, uh, intake power intake to the intake side and you add one to the exhaust you're plugging both the biggest holes in the system mm -hmm. and you're basically creating a sealed system mm -hmm. wherever the uh, visible vapor appears after that is where your leaks are fantastic you want to show us absolutely I have the machine hooked up to shop air you can either run on uh, 12 volt or uh, AC uh, your choice uh, depending on where, where you're at, whether you're in the field or in your shop. Put the air pressure to the desired pressure. Now, uh, a lot of people think that simulating 50 pounds or 100 pounds uh, is the way to go, uh, which is not the case. Several manufacturers have determined that you need to keep it under 20 PSI maximum, uh, or you could dislodge a catalyst or hurt in, uh, some of the sensors inside the engine. So in this case, more is not better. More there is, is not better. There is a correct amount of pressure that simulates the boost of the running engine without potentially creating more problems that you're going to have to deal with. Correct. Okay. Correct. You so don't want to 20... damage the system. You're just testing the system mm -hmm. without opening any of the ports. Perfect. Okay. So 2 to 20 PSI. Correct. That's what we're talking right. about. And usually okay. the sweet spot is between 5 and 10 PSI. Great. Okay. So these are pass-through adapters. You hook it up. You set the pressure, you turn the machine on, and you just take simple flashlight, or we always uh, include a halogen inspection light, and we look for leaks. So we just go over, and we're just looking for visible vapor throughout the system. So Pretty easy to see when it shows up, yeah. right? It's very simple so you to know see. This is where you're Within minutes, you're seeing a visible vapor trail of where your leaks are. Very simple to do, and you can only really takes a few minutes. see it blowing out here. There's no doubt about it. Right. Right? Yeah, there's a stream right here out of this clamp. You could either tighten the clamp or maybe have to replace it. Your choice, and you have to solve all these little leaks because a lot of times little teeny leaks Several of them sure. create a large leak, sure. and then you're having your air fuel mixture uh, thrown off, and or uh, that air infiltration causes a temperature problem within the after treatment system where it won't build up enough uh, height, enough temperature mm -hmm. to create that regeneration. Mm -hmm. So then, what do you have to do? You have to bring the truck in, you have to take the DPF off, and service it when you don't have to. Most most DPFs so are serviced. Time. Yeah, sure. most DPFs are serviced. Uh, the manufacturers say, you know, 200,000 mile plus before you have to touch that DPF. Uh, reality is because the trucks are driven on hard roads, bounced around, leaks are created on their own, yep. and you have to check for them. The best way to check for them is not when you have a problem, but when you're doing that pre. Preventive maintenance sure. uh, inspection, 
throw this tool on it, sure. look for your leaks, fix them while you already have the truck down you for know, service these, anyway. These vehicles roll off the assembly line, tight as can be, in great shape. We all know the manufacturers, the OEMs are fantastic in HD, but you think about the wear and tear and it, yeah. snow and rocks and rough roads and you know the number of miles, what's the average number of miles the transport vehicle is putting on every year. 100,000 so, plus normally. That's how you end up with these leaks. And I know you didn't intend this, but I want to mention it anyway. In this case, you've, you've got um, a, a seal, right? Right. And this is where the leak is coming from. Some people are concerned about driving up warranty costs right. by finding these things. What happens is it drives down warranty costs. Because exactly. the vast majority of the time, more than three out of four times, it's going to be it's a simple a fix. seal, a gasket. Yeah. It's going to be a connection point yeah. that is a simple, inexpensive fix. So you're not playing part starts with things like a, a charger cooler or a turbo or the other really exactly. expensive components. Exactly. Yeah. It's it. A lot of times it's simple fixes, mm -hmm. but overlooked items because oh well, that's a clamp. I tighten it up as much as I could tighten it. It must be sealed. Mm -hmm. More often than not, it's where the leak point is, you know, because just people don't realize. And in prior years past, we just checked the charge air cooler and we took these items off to put the plugs on just to check the charge air cooler. Charge air cooler is fine, it's the joints that well, are. Well, you the bring problem. up a good point too. One of the other really important things to know about using this technology in PM and repair is that you go through, you do the test, you identify any leak points that may exist make that repair and then test again to be sure that exactly. the system yeah you check the quality of your repair a lot of um after treatment manufacturers and service companies are using this technology after they do cleanings right. on dpf systems once they reinstall it right. to make sure that they haven't introduced leaks into the right. system yeah a lot of um companies that do the cleaning of dpfs are also doing diagnostics and which is important because what happens is, well, I got a clogged DPF, yeah. and then what happens is they clean it, and two weeks later or less, the customer calls back and says, you didn't clean my DPF properly, uh, it's clogged again. Because they haven't fixed the root cause. They never fix the root cause. That's it. Right? And this is happening so much, uh, even the DPF after treatment manufacturers, the people that make it for the aftermarket and the uh, manufacturers, have been reaching out to us. We need a fix for this problem because we know it's a big problem. Air leaks are a big problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a company, uh, Dynex, mm -hmm. Dynex, mm -hmm. whichever way you want to pronounce it, <laughs> uh, reached out to us recently, and now is carrying our product as a as a uh, fix because they know it's how big it is. So it's really become industry best practice to use this high pressure diagnostic leak detection. Um, in conjunction with after treatment maintenance and right. repair to, and to solve those problems. I mean, if the dealers are taking on this equipment mm -hmm. and, and and solving their problems, the fleets, the aftermarket, Absolutely. you know, the individual um, uh, truck owner mm -hmm. needs to reach out to people that have this equipment uh, to find these leaks. So when I talk with um, the big fleets and they're diving into this, one of the first things that they want to identify is ROI. How long does it take to pay for itself? And right. two years of field research indicates that that number is 4.3 weeks. 4.3, 4 uh, about weeks. a month. About a month to pay about for itself, right? right? And in the world of um, tools and equipment, of four weeks, a month to pay for itself is a minute. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And then it's going to save dramatic time and increase up. Right. And, and they don't even factor in the, you know, you plug these leaks, you're going to save on fuel. Fuel savings. Guaranteed. That's what it's about. So you, you, you know, it's probably shorter than that time frame if you count the fuel in, the fuel savings. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, usually uh, it's within a month that you pay for it. And right. big fleets are already buying this equipment because they didn't know the problem. They've done their own, they, you know, fleets, uh, because they're spending millions and millions of dollars a year uh, to save money. These guys know their business. They yeah. do their own research and one of the biggest uh, fleet, uh, fleets out there of trucks uh, have taken on this equipment in 2018. We've got a question. 
um, Naomi is saying that um, Joe from Atlanta is asking us about CNG. Can you use it on CNG? Uh, compressed natural gas uh, engines are becoming the secondary to diesel now mm -hmm. because people are buying CNG uh, instead of diesel with in, inner city and, and stop and go because after treatment is just so failing like miserably. waste management, like kind of trash trucks or buses Tra or that type you of name stop it. and go? I, I'm, I'm starting to okay. see delivery uh, vehicles, de delivery vehicles uh, with CNG engines. Okay. Absolutely yes, you can use it on CNG engines because there's a turbo there. Mm. So you're checking the whole upstream uh, air fuel mixture issue with CNG. Same thing, if, you're, if you have leaks, you're not getting your turbo boost, you're consuming more compressed natural gas uh, and not getting the fuel economy that you need. So it's, it's yes, uh, definitely. One more question, what about dye? You didn't mention dye in your example. Oh, we don't use dye. Uh, we have a very uh, uh, thick visible vapor uh, we've never had to use, resort to dye, uh, however, most manufacturers, at least every manufacturer we've dealt with in the heavy duty market, yeah. s consider it a contaminant. Mm -hmm. So meaning uh, they're, they're scared it's going to hurt the sensors and or the catalysts on, on the after treatment system. So not so necessary. And not made it, stay away. If you would like to meet our team and see this equipment in action, we will all be at HDAW, Heavy Duty Aftermarket Week in Las Vegas on January 28th through 31st and have a booth there and be uh, glad to talk with you and happy to meet you in person. And then in March, our team will also be at TMC, which is the Technology and Maintenance Council of ATA, American Trucking Association. That's a mouthful. Yep. That's in Atlanta in uh, around March 18 to 21. And we would love to meet you there. We'll also be doing another webinar uh, on the 17th, is that right? On January 17th on our air brake leak detection technology. So please uh, sign up for that, reach out to us. If you have more specific technical questions about how this technology would work in your setting, in your fleet, your repair facility, we are more than happy to talk with you. We love talking to our customers. Please give us a call. And I'm happy to me. answer any question uh, via phone, yeah. email. So thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it and look forward to hopefully seeing you in person soon.